part two, uh, industrial examples. I probably need to warn you about one thing about industrial examples that are not really uh, good for demos. Because in many cases, the model, <coughs> when it's built and it uh, uh, does what it's meant to do, it just, uh, you know, kind of black box with some charts and, and numbers, or maybe even black box that outputs things to Excel or a database. So it's not re really, may not be exciting thing to, to look at. So I'll try to show you some things. And, uh, but probably the most important things in this part is the, the problem definitions that, uh, okay, which problems were addressed and successfully addressed uh, with simulation modeling. So that uh, when you leave this class, you will uh, have kind of sense of uh, in, in which industry, which problem can, in which problem simulation can help. Okay, so uh, most of this part will be about uh, logistics, transportation, and supply chains, but the first example is, is manufacturing. Uh, eh, no, no, no. Uh, slides were hidden. I'll unhide them. From here to uh, here. Okay, so uh, uh, that was a, uh, one of our first projects years ago. It was a foam concrete plan uh, somewhere near, uh, near Moscow, I think. So the, the actual problem was very simple. The, it was a brand new plan by that time. And uh, the designed capacity of the plant was, uh, let's say, 100k cubic meters per year. The real capacity, the real output of the plant was well uh, below that level. It was like 50 to 60. And as long as this, this was, you know, <clears throat> real brand new facility uh, that was just, you know, bought, delivered, uh, installed, and started working. So the, the uh, <clears throat> owners of the plants were um, really upset with that. And they were trying to explore why, uh, why the real capacity was uh, below the actual capacity. So and simulation model in this case was built to investigate the reasons uh, why things are happening that way and why the plant can't really operate at the designed um, capacity. So I'll first show you the, the model. Uh, it's, uh, in this case, it's a really good looking 3D model, um, just to get you, give you a feeling of um, how the model can look like. I think it's uh, oh, that one. It's a mixture of process modeling and uh, discrete event modeling. There are parts of the model that are processes, like this one, for example. You can see there, like queues, block objects, and there are parts of the model that are uh, pure agent-based, like this one. This is what it is, um, back till table, don't know really, what piece of equipment. And the model has as many objects inside as, as you can see here. Let's run simulation. This is purely demo. This is not the model that was actually used in the, in the, pro, um, in the project, but it's very close to it. Um, some parameters, which I don't want to change. This is the uh, plans. I'll run a little bit faster so the model gets warmed up. And uh, in the meantime, I'll explain uh, what's, what's here. So there is the, uh, the mix uh, is prepared over here. 
Then it's transported to the so-called drying area. So the, the, uh, the actual, let's see, liquid in the containers um, needs to stay here for a while. Uh, then it's transported to the cutting line and the blocks are cut into pieces and then it's transported into autoclaves where it's baked. After it's baked, uh, it's ready. And the reason it's cut before it's baked is just <clears throat> because it's easier to cut it beforehand and then you can just separate the blocks <clears throat> after after the whole thing is ready. So um, that's um, a typical uh, aerated uh, concrete plant. This, uh, this is 2D animation. You can look at 3D animation. So, um, yeah, you can, you can watch the whole process. The ready uh, containers are cut here. I'll just slow down a little bit. And then when uh, this, let's say, train will be filled with uh, already cut blocks, it will be transferred inside the autoclave. So uh, speed up. Now it goes inside, it will be baked there and then leave, etc. So why 3D uh, animation? Uh, for uh, different reasons. Uh, one of them is to visually verify that things really happen in the model as they, well, uh, or uh, close to how they happen in reality. So it's uh, sometimes 3D animation is just uh, done for, um, for demo purposes. Let's say when you uh, deliver or try to kind of sell the project to the management, it sometimes can be good to, um, to do 3D modeling uh, because it, you know, it's always attracts attention and uh, uh, it's, well, uh, it consumes kind of development efforts to put together uh, <clears throat> 3D animation like this. In this case, I think that was probably maybe a weak effort, uh, maybe less than, but kind of that order uh, by an experienced modeler to put together an animation of that, that quality. But uh, the model obviously was not done for, uh, for animation and for playing with it. It's uh, done for statistics. So um, uh, currently the main statistics plan is not available because the uh, Model is still warming up. You can well look at some charts. Let's see, these are the um, let's see time charts of uh, equipment states. Like um, this is idle. This these are different busy, um, waiting, working, etc. Different states of equipment. Um, it's just taking too slow to warm up, so I, I, I'm not going to wait for, uh, for the model to warm up. I'll uh, basically show you the, the actual outcome of the project. So the outcome of the simulation project was this. The original assumption and how the, the design, design capacity of the plant was calculated, it was calculated based on uh, this chart. These are um, 
different stages of a certain, you know, let's say, block of, uh, of concrete uh, being processed at that plant, like uh, baking, removing, cutting, baking, removing, cutting, etc. So let's say if you take the cutting line, the, the uh, stage of the process where these blocks are cut into smaller pieces, you see that uh, all these different, uh, let's say, um, uh, different portions are so, so nicely aligned in time that the cutting line is 100% utilized and there are, no, um, there are no idle times. And so was done for every, uh, actual every piece of equipment in this, well, I'm simplifying things, but at the end, it was clear that the design capacity of 100K uh, cubicle meters per year, that number was based on this uh, ideal, let's say, ideal model of the plant, where, you know, zero stochastic, uh, zero stochasticity, no randomness, 100% utilization of every piece of equipment, whereas in reality, Uh, the picture was different. Just because the um, baking time was stochastic and some other things were stochastic, uh, the process was never nicely aligned as this. Uh, there were inevitable gaps in when things are actually ready. And therefore, uh, if we just take this single piece of equipment as a cutting line, it, it did have inevitable gaps in, uh, in its, when, when it's idle, in its operation. So basically the outcome of this particular project was that it's not that the plant is operating badly, you know, just the initial design, let's say, or the initial calculations of how it could operate was wrong. And, uh, well, that was, well, satisfactory uh, result for the, whoever uh, did manage the plant. Uh, because they, were, they actually learned that, well, we did nothing wrong. The, the whole installation is in place. It's just the initial, let's say, numbers that we're getting from whoever sold us the equipment were wrong. And uh, that's the actual capacity at which the, the, uh, the plant was working. Uh, again, here things are pretty much simplified. But uh, this is a real project, and this is really the... Um, case when simulation did help to understand, to get some insight how the real system worked.